So in the system life cycle, uh, we're moving away from the analysis now into the design. And this is really the, um, the big leap where all the analysis of the current system has been done. All the techniques have been through on the cycle and um, the to and fro in. And we've got to a point where, where something can be put together in terms of what the new system is going to look like. And this is a design spec. So if you've got a team of people who are going to build this um, particular system, this is the thing that's going to hold it together. In other words, these are the plans for the new system. So really, a design specification looks at, at content, it looks at the order, and how these things relate to each other. So we're looking at all the parts of a system, and it's better to think of something quite grand here, quite big, and then you can start to think of how the things relate. So. Uh, analysis has been done as to how the existing system works and some of that may be changed and some of that may be kept but we're looking down we're looking down the system and we're looking at um, how things happen and how things go together and what's going to be included and what's not going to be included so th this is what a design spec involves and I've pieced it together like this where I've separated the separate elements again into that idea of input process output because you must always stick with that as the core foundation of everything to do with systems analysis and design and indeed anything to do with IT and computing just to recall what that is input I process P output O things go in things get changed something comes out the other side data goes in processing happens changes made, calculations, whatever, output comes out in the form of information. So a design spec involves those different things happening at the input stage and we've got to have some some checking, we've got to look at what the type of the inputs and we've got to look at the hardware involved in at the inputting stage. As regards processing I've actually lumped storage into that, arguably that shouldn't be in there at all but there's nowhere else to put it so you'd be standing outside it. So as regards processing and this really isn't the focus here, the focus is really in the input and the output. Uh, but process, what what methods of processing are required and, and really what storage has got to happen. But then the output is how you're going to communicate um, the information that's needed at the end. So for input, the considerations that have to be taken into account as regards uh, putting together a design spec um, will be the hardware involved or the hardware that has to be purchased, maybe use an existing kit, maybe you're going to have to go out and buy some more. Um, the form that the um, data comes in, does it come in a paper form, do you take it from a particular place, maybe it's numerical, maybe it's um, words, maybe it's images whatever, uh, what form that data comes in and then the users involved, don't forget there's going to have to be people most likely who are going to have to input this data or does it come automatically? So the user in this case may not be an actual particular person, it may be a, another system that it's got to talk to but that's getting very complicated. So just think of it in your head in terms of a person inputting data. So uh, these are the the real core things that go together into the mix of what makes up input. As I've already said, processing is really not the most important thing here. So if we just look at processing briefly as being split into what processing needs there are in the system that's going to be created and what storage and indeed how you're going to get that storage out, in other words the retrieval needs of the system that's going to be designed. This, this is really the two elements that make up processing. And you'll notice that this diagram for output is exactly the same as the diagram for input. So the factors you face in, in designing input for um, the system, in putting together a spec that's going to decide what goes into input, well the same considerations are very similar, are probably going to come into your output as well, uh, in terms of what what are you going to use to output? Is it going to output on screen? Is it going to output on paper? Is it going to output to a, a, a bespoke system? Um, is it going to output to a particular platform, to mobile devices? You could go on and on and on. And what form does the output have to come in again? Does it have to come in text? Does it have to come in images? Does it have to come numerical? Does it have to feed into another system? And then who are the people that's going to be needing to use this data? Who are the users? Who's it outputting to? 
and lastly it's worth looking at output in terms of a balance and what's given in the uh, syllabus course text there, there is a number of considerations to look at and they're well worth a read and a, uh, a memorization of some of those because they're really important aspects but it is really a balance and I want to get this idea of a balance in your head which is the balance between too much information and not enough information because when you're giving um, output there really is a key to designing it um, that strikes a balance between those two things and it's also not just the too much and the not enough there's also the factors of which bits are the most important and which bits are the most important to particular people as well